I would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of basic electrical engineering. Uh, in this session, I am going to discuss the construction of DC generator. First of all, let me ask one thing. What do you mean by construction? Construction is nothing but how the uh, DC generator is made up of. In the sense, what are the major components which are assembled to construct or to develop a DC generator? So we are going to familiar various components which are applicable to DC generator. First of all, I'll be preparing the checklist of the components which is applicable to DC generator. So please make a note of this. First one is called field system. Second one is armature core, armature winding, commutator and brushes. So for your reference, there is a cross-sectional area of DC generator. Okay. That is going to display on the screen. First of all, we'll understand the first component that is called field system. So it comprises of yoke. You can see here the outer covering of the generator that is generally called as yoke. Can you see here? Yes. Second one is called a pole. Yoke is completed. Then I'll be showing you pole. So can you see the pole here? So here these are the segments. These are called poles. Okay. It's very clear that these are the poles. So I'll be drawing. This structure is generally called as poles. So this is one pole. This is another pole. This is uh, another pole. Let me know how many poles are there. There are four poles here. Other one is interpole. A along with the pole, the this is another another segment is called interpole. Okay, interpole. Interpole. Okay. Similarly, pole shoes will be available. So look at this. The uh, here you can see here pole shoe. See, this is your pole shoe. See the structure. Pole shoe. How it is made up of see, look at this. this segment is generally called as pole shoe and uh, field winding. So along with the pole shoe, you can see here, along with the pole, you can see the winding, the small dot dot portion you can see here. It's a cro area of cross section or half section, right? Cross section. So here you can see the winding. So dot 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 portion you can see here. These are called the windings. Okay. To improve the magnetic field strength, we are providing the winding also because we are using majorly electromagnets. So I think you could familiar the segment called field system. Now I'll be showing you the armature core. So let me clear the screen. So where is armature core? I'll let you know. So look at the se second segment, armature core. Yes, I'm pointing out the segment called armature core. Yes, this is your armature. So the circular shape with the slot, the entire segment is generally called as armature. Look at this here, you can point out. This segment. See, I put a cross stick now. This segment is generally called as armature core. It is made up of with uh, so many number of armature conductors. See, so many number of armature conductors. Here you can see. So, so many number of armature conductors is actually made up of. Okay, there is a slot also. You can see the cuttings. So, collectively we call it as uh, armature core. Second one is called armature winding. So, along with that you can see uh, the arm like... Uh, you see uh, here you can see along with that it is very difficult to observe so here along with that you can there is a by default you should understand that there is an armature winding Sec next is called commutator commutator okay where is commutator so next to armature you can see commutator look at this this segment is called as commutator the second circular shape see this section is generally called as commutator look at this commutator we familiar armature then we studied field winding okay Next is called a brushes. What is brushes? So brushes are very clear. So in order to here, uh, we can see if you put like this, we can say like a brushes. Okay, brushes. This is your brushes. Okay. Br uh, then next is inside you can see the shaft. Okay, shaft. This is your shaft. So we familiar. Uh, we familiar different components. You can first of all have a look of this. So try to understand the importance. I'll explain the need for each component. So field system, we uh, uh, we, we are familiar field system. Uh, yoke, pole, pole shoe, field winding, everything is visible. See field winding, uh, then shaft is available, frame. Okay, uh, then pole shoe, interpole, everything is visible here. Armature core, you can see the armature. Okay, uh, then armature, we, have, we can see the armature winding also. Then commutator. Next to armature, there is another circular shape that is called a commutator. 
then uh, brushes are not visible here but we can along with the commuter we can connect with the brushes okay these are the major segments i will let you know the importance of each component what is field system yeah field system comprises of yoke then pole pole shoe and field winding so first of all what yoke does what is the significance of yoke okay so yoke is made up of with the cast iron or cast steel here you can see the yoke o outer covering is known as yoke uh, it is made up of with uh, cast iron or cast steel. Okay, that's a speciality. You can note down this point. It is made up of with the cast iron. So the main purpose is it provides mechanical support to the poles and it provides the DC machine from harmful atmospheric condition like uh, moisture, dust, etc. Okay, you can see the mo to get rid of moisture, dust we are using or uh, like uh, yoke. Also, it reduces the reluctance. So reluctance is nothing but Okay, L by mu A. Mu is the permeability, A is the area, then L is the length. Okay, so it minimizes the reluctance. Okay, reluctance. So, if area that is increased means reluctance will be reduced. Okay, correct, correct. That's what exactly happened here. Okay, so it offers low resistance path so that more number of magnetic flux pass inside the particular segment. That is regarding yoke. So second com second com second segment of field system is pole and pole shoe. So pole, what is the purpose of pole? As you can see, the importance. What is the importance? The significance of pole. So the main thing is pole will generate the magnetic field. So it is connected with the yoke with the help of some kind of nut and bolt. Then the main purpose is they support the field coils and it. Uh, uh, that's a major, major thing. Okay, poles it support the field coil and it generate the magnetic field. Apart from that, the duty of pole shoe it is spread out the magnetic flux uniformly. Okay, uh, so the main purpose of uh, pole shoe is to spread the magnetic flux uniformly. I'll be showing you. So look at the diagram. So the diagram uh, it is very clear that the shape of the pole shoe you can see. This is your pole shoe. Look at this. Pole shoe. This is your pole shoe. Kindly note down the point. So this is this, this segment is generally called as pole shoe. It uh, makes the magnetic field uniformly like this. Okay, like this magnetic flux that is going to be spread. See, like this. Okay, this is regarding pole shoe. Okay the magnetic flux that is going to be spread uniformly. Next is called field winding. So what is the significance of field winding? So the main thing of field winding is uh, we, we, we require an electromagnet, correct? We require electromagnet. Definitely we need the coil. Okay. So once the current passes through the coil, so surroundings get magnetized. Okay. So the main uh, purpose of field winding that is actually for uh, produce the magnetic field okay so as the num uh, like uh, when the coil is energized definitely that particular pole that becomes magnet correct so field winding that is uh, wrapped up with the poles that is very clear so it is made up of with the copper i'll show you where is uh, field winding okay so let me have a look of the diagram field winding so please observe here. Field winding will be available here along with the pole. This is your pole. Can you see the pole here? Yes. Here we can see the field winding. This is your field winding. Yes. So uh, when the current passes through the field winding, uh, definitely the production of magnetic field takes place in the pole. Next segment is called armature core, second component, armature core. So armature core is basically a conductor. So we already studied Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. So in order to induce a magnetic field, we require one segment. That is what exactly called armature. So it is made up of with a slotted iron core lamination. Okay. Why it is laminated? Because to minimize the eddy current loss. So we are going to make like a small, small segment uh, attached together in spite of uh, installing the single conductor we are using small sliced one because the eddy current has to be minimized 
correct here you can see uh, the structure of armature see it is made up of it a number of slots okay uh, here uh, the entire segment is generally called as armature okay armature so uh, see there, there are different different slots available also, it is made up of with a laminated fashion. Why? Because we have to minimize the eddy current loss. Okay, eddy current loss should be as minimum as possible. Fine. Otherwise, what will happen? Efficiency comes down. Similarly, uh, armature, uh, how it is just like a closed circuit only. How the armature is made up of? It is basically, uh, it is developed in the form of a closed circuit. Okay. So, there are different type of wind, uh, arrangement of winding. So, okay. Uh, there are depends on the armature conductor um, how it is uh, going to be developed is so there are the winding you can connect in two manners one is called a lap winding other one is called a wave winding okay so the armature winding it is just like a closed fashion uh, similarly uh, how it is connected means it will be connected in the form of like a two segments armature winding will be developed in two manner one is called lap winding other one is called wave winding so what is the meaning of lap and wave winding so please consider uh, the armature winding see how the coil there are it is made up of it uh, like a winding means uh, there are so many number of coils available so how it is going to be arranged look at this so we have a commutator correct commutator segment is available from com this commutator see how it is connected so one coil is connected to so other segment of the commutator from other segment of the com commutator immediately another coil is going to be started so there is an overlapping okay there is an overlapping over overlapping will be taken place here so such kind of winding is generally called as lap winding okay so uh, the number of conductor per parallel path in lap winding is equal to number of poles. So, number of conductor per parallel path. Number of conductor per parallel path will be always equal to number of poles. This concept you have to remember because, see, look at this. It depends on the number of poles. How many number of parallel path is available? It depends on the number of poles. Here, there are two number of poles available. Definitely two two like a parallel path is available. So here we can write A is equal to P is equal to two because there are two conductor per, per parallel path and there are two number of poles. I think you understood. So now moving on to the wave winding. Second type of winding is generally called as wave winding. Okay. So consider the wave winding. There is no overlapping. As you can observe, there is no overlapping. Here, remember that in case of wave winding, okay, always do remember this point. There will be always there are two number of parallel path in case of wave winding. Look at this. Two parallel path will be always there. One, two. So, A is equal to two in case of wave winding. So, number of parallel path will be always equal to two only. Remember this, like this. Coil number, see, one path, this is another path. Okay, so number of parallel path will be always equal to 2. That point you have to remember. So, lap, uh, lap winding I have written here. Uh, the end of the each armature coil is connected to adjacent segment on the commutator. Look at this. So, here number of parallel path will be equal to the number of poles. If I talk about the wave winding, so please uh, refer the wave winding. Here you can see like the finishing end of one armature coil is connected to starting end of the other coil. Look at this. Finishing end of one coil is connected to starting end of the other coil. So here I would like to tell you one thing. Uh, the, uh, where does lap winding used? So lap winding uh, that is mainly used for high current. Okay. High current. Low voltage requirement. Where the wave winding is used for high voltage high voltage low current system if the generator the requirement of the output based on the output you can perform the winding either you can go for lap winding or wave winding i think it's clear to all so this is regarding the lap winding and wave winding we are talking about the armature okay 
uh, it is actually the rotating part or we can say like the conductor okay because in faraday's law we discussed about one conductor is essential uh, for inducing uh, the emf okay then commutator we will discuss about the commutator can you see the commutator here yes observe very carefully where is commutator can you point out of course this is your commutator the whole segment this segment that is called a commutator look at this commutator see this point is called a commutator this uh, circle is generally called as circular circular shaped one is generally called as commutator so why commutator is required remember that uh, according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction the emf that is going to be generated in the armature conductor that is in fluctuating nature okay Con varying nature but we require unidirectional one so in order to convert the alternating voltage or alternating current for so electrical quantity uh, from the fluctuating nature to unidirectional nature we require commutator fluctuating electrical quantity will be converted to unidirectional electrical quantity or we can say like this fluctuating armature current will be converted into unidirectional current fluctuating voltage is going to be converted into unidirectional unidirectional voltage like that commutator to convert alternating voltage generated in the armature into direct voltage across the brushes so commutator is made up of its copper segment usually hard drawn copper that is a major thing which we are going to construct commutator also we require the pro mica sheet suitable insulation we are going to use mica okay like that prevents the short circuits other segment is called as brushes the main purpose commutator and brushes both are connected to each other okay so from the commutator we, re we require dc 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 will be generated in the commutator the fluctuating ac will be converted into unidirectional dc by using commutator so commutator is known as mechanical rectifier mechanical rectifier one of the important question for the competitive examination please remember this so brushes are is to ensure electrical connections between the rotating commutator and the stationary electrical load so to collect the current we require brushes the brushes are made up of with the carbon okay carbon because carbon is belong to negative temperature coefficient of resistance material ntc material so the advantages of nctc material is okay as the uh, temperature increases the resistance comes down that is advantage moreover the component is stable okay this is regarding uh, the each component okay so please go through this so yeah, let me conclude the session in this video i have discussed about the construction of dc generator so there are uh, how many five components okay even one component like a field system segmented into several sub segments such as yoke hole hole shoe and field winding even we discussed about armature core importance of armature winding uh, how the armature winding has been connected two manners one is lap other one is wave wave manner wave connected then importance of commutator and ultimately brushes so this diagram also required for your exam point of view if you have any queries you can put up in the comment box i'm happy to answer so thank you so much for watching this video happy learning if you are watching this video first time kindly share with your friends and uh, colleagues also don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you so much for watching this video